Thank you, Stephanie. And um, yeah, this is about PyMGrid, which is a new Python package for the multi-grid reduction time. And this is a joint work with my supervisor, Stephanie and Matthias. So at first, uh, I will skip the introduction of the MGrid algorithm since we already heard two very nice talks about it. And uh, let's directly start with uh, the package. But if you have any question, I have additional slides at the end of this presentation. So let's talk about MGrid, uh, Py MGrid, which is an open source Python code, uh, which implements the MGrid algorithm, which is a non-intuitive approach and optimal time multigrid algorithm as we heard before. And yeah, we have the opportunity to apply different uh, cycling strategies, relaxation uh, schemes, and so on. Further, we have time parallelism using MPI. And in the package, there are a variety of pre-implemented uh, ordinary and partial differential equation. So if you're a beginner to um, the package or to the algorithm itself, you can play around a little bit with existing problems. And uh, yeah, further for space-time problems, uh, you can add spatial parallelism to the time parallelism of the package. And if you want to, you can add um, spatial crossing, which is, which is optional. And uh, for the coupling, for uh, you can couple uh, the package with other Python packages, which is really easy. So, for example, you can use FireDrake or Petsy um, and get the spatial parallelism, which is already implemented in these packages. So the package is open source and is available at GitHub. You can reach it uh, at this address. And there is a really nice documentation with a lot of stuff, for example, quick start tutorials, examples. So if you want to take a look at the package, this is a really good uh, place to start. And um, you can also uh, get the package uh, using the Python package index, so you can install it uh, using pip. And there are only some requirements. So you need a Python version, which is greater or equal to 3.6, and some uh, Python packages, which are automatically installed if you're using pip for installing PyMGrid. And yeah, so let's talk about the installation. So it's really easy. The uh, only thing you have to do is open and bash and uh, type pip3 install pymgrid and it will take about 20 seconds. And afterwards, you have the package and you can try your first example with the package. Uh, yeah, and this is one of these. Uh, Simple examples, we use some of these pre-implemented um, applications. In this case, a Scala ODE dark with test problem. And here, first here, we uh, import some classes and uh, function from PyMGrid. Afterwards, we set up our PyMGrid problem, so the problem we want to solve. In this case, we have a dark first test problem and we have some starting point, some end point, end point and uh, a number of time points, which includes both boundaries. Afterwards, we uh, set up our multigrid hierarchy, um, which can be done by this function or in different ways. I will talk about this later, but in this case, we have a two level uh, MGrid algorithm with a causing factor of two and uh, we have to pass this multi-level structure to our MGrid class and afterwards just call uh, the function solve and that's it. So um, at the end you can run your first example with PyMGrid in about one or two minutes which is really nice. So let's talk a little bit more about um, the implementation details and in general we have a class-oriented uh, approach and we have four types of classes. So we have the solver, which implements the MGrid algorithm, and we are able to choose between different variants of the MGrid algorithm by par parameters. But uh, the most of these um, most of these 
have default values. So if you're a beginner to MGrid, you can just use the default values, which performs relatively well for most cases. And if you are more an expert, then you can choose different variants by different parameters. And of course, uh, it is really easy to adapt um, the algorithm to your own needs by overriding just single functions. For example, um, the relaxation, you want to do something with an app relaxation, you can just override the function for an app relaxation. The next thing, uh, that we have is a vector class which con uh, contains a solution of a single point in time and uh, this each vector class has to inherit from some uh, abstract superclass which is in the core of PyMGrid and we have to define some mandatory functions so set value get values clone clone zero and so on and uh, yeah the most of these functions are really two or three liners, so it's not too much to do. And the next uh, type of class that we have is the application class. The application class contains information about the problem, which uh, is at the one, uh, at one hand uh, the time grid, and on the other hand the step function, so our time integrator. And again, we have to inherit from some super class. The fourth type of class is some optional class. So if you want to use uh, spatial coarsening, you can also implement this grid transfer class. But uh, if you don't want to use spatial coarsening, you don't have to care about it. And the next thing we want to take a look in more detail about the different classes. So let's start with the solver, the our Embrid class. And in general, if you want to use the uh, if you want to use the mgrid solver, then you have to do two, two things. You have to create an instance and afterwards you can solve it. So yeah, the only thing you have to pass to the mgrid solver is a problem hierarchy here. And there are further parameters. We will talk about them later, but this is the only thing you have to pass to the uh, solver. Everything else has default values. So what is this problem hierarchy? A problem hierarchy is nothing more than a list of applications of problems. So in this case, we have our fine level problem with uh, 101 points in time, and we have our course level problem with 51 points in time. And yeah, we just put them together in a list and pass this list to the uh, solver. And uh, yeah, so by this structure, and here are different ways to pass a time information to the application class. So you can choose between, uh, you can also apply non-uniform coarsening, for example. And uh, the coarsening here, or the values here, uh, defines the coarsening factor. And what is also possible, you can choose different application class on different levels here such that you have different time integrators and probably a cheaper model on the uh, cost grid. Okay, so I talked a little bit about different parameters and here are probably the most important ones. Uh, so there are a lot of more, take a look at the documentation if you, uh, if you are interested, but here is the most important one. So the relaxation scheme, the cycling strategy, and uh, yeah, if you want to use nested iteration or not. So the cycling, uh, the relaxation scheme is in general an F relaxation followed by a number of CF relaxations. And you can pass this parameter here, CF iter to the, um, to the constructor and you can specify the number of this additional CF relaxations. So a little bit more about implementation here. So um, here we see uh, the cycling for um, the cycle strategy for a V cycle. And we see here in the first iteration, we start with an FCF relaxation and end with an F relaxation. And for the following iteration, we can skip the first F iteration here and because it's the same work as uh, already has before uh, has performed in the iteration before 
we can pass different cycling strategies in the same way. So here uh, you can pass the cycling type that you want to have. And if you want to use it, you can use, uh, you can use the parameter nested iteration to uh, compute an improved initial guess. So starting on the process grid, we interpolate our solution to the finest level and um, start with this improved initial guess. Uh, one more word to this plot here. So this plot is uh, generated by a uh, class which extends the MGrid algorithm with some plot. So this can be generated dynamically. Uh, so you can choose between, uh, so it can also be generated for an F, just an F relaxation or an FC, FC, F relaxation and for different cyclic types and so on. Um, let's get further and let's talk a little bit about the parallel computation and distribution. Again, we have here some plot which is generated by this uh, class mgrid with plots. And our distribution of time points is based on the finest grid, which means we split our finest time grid evenly on the number of processes. Uh, it doesn't belong if the last point is an F point and C point, we just split it evenly. Um, the next coarser levels are always depends on the finest grid and only the uh, coarsest level um, here is handled by one process because here is a forward solve. We also have an overlap between communication and computation. So assume that we have the setting so we have P and F interval, which is split between uh, multiple, uh, between two processors. And uh, yeah, so this point needs the data from this point to uh, perform the next step of the F relaxation. And uh, yeah, that's why we, go, uh, we, we compute the F relaxation in the following order. So we starting with the rightmost interval, computing this both points. Afterwards, we can send the data non-blocking to the next processor. And then we can go from the right to the left, uh, computing the intervals from the right to the left. And when we reach this first interval, which needs the data from the uh, process before, uh, then this process has already computed this data and uh, send it. Okay, let's get further and let's take a look to the vector and application class. And for this, we um, take a look again at our Scala ODE example. So a dark twist test problem. Uh, and the vector class contains the solution for one point in time. In this case, we only have to store one value. And for, zo uh, for those who are not familiar with uh, uh, Python, so we're creating here a new class, vector dark with, which inherits from this uh, super class. And this is a constructor which gets uh, the one value. And here we call the parent constructor and storing the uh, value in a local member variable. And uh, the next thing we have to do is to define these uh, functions. Here's an example for the addition and subtraction. And as you can see, these are really two liners. So it's really fast and you can take a look at uh, existing vector classes. And so it's really easy to implement them. Okay, so the next thing we want to take a look at is the application class and the application class uh, contains the time information and uh, yeah, problem specific uh, values parameters. So at first the time information, so we have already seen this T start, T stop, the number of time points, and uh, these time information are handled by our superclass. So again, we have some superclass and we just pass these parameters to the superclass and the superclass handles the time information. Since the time information are always the same for each problem and uh, if you want uh, to write your own problem, you don't have to care about it. 
So um, the only thing we have to do is to store our lambda value in a member variable, which is here by default set to, uh, set to minus one. And afterwards we have to define two more member variables, which are uh, the vector template, which defines the data structure for any point in time and the vector t start, which defines here the initial condition, which is one in this case. The last thing we have to do is define our step function, which evolves the solution from t start to t stop. And in this case, it's a backward Euler. And uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, that's all we have to do. And afterwards, we can run our first Embrit example. And uh, in this case, we have a three level M grid algorithm with two times a crossing factor of two here. And we pass this problem hierarchy again to our M grid algorithm uh, called the solve method. And this is what the result looks like. So, uh, yeah, the sh values are shortened here a little bit, but. Uh, in general, that's the output. So at the beginning, we have some startup. So um, setting up the, member, uh, the data structures and so on. Afterwards, we have some information about our iterations. We have uh, the information about the convergence criteria, which is in general the space time residual. But uh, of course, you can also choose uh, implement your own uh, convergence criteria here some information about the convergence factor, the runtime of this iteration, and yeah, uh, afterwards the overall runtime, and some overview about some parameters. So at the beginning about the uh, problem specific parameters and afterwards about the M-grid algorithm. So we can see here we have a three level M-grid. So this is defined by this three levels here and we have two times the crossing factor of two. So here two times uh, the crossing factor of two. And here, for example, um, this was our stopping criteria and we have, this was a serial run. So we only used one process here. So now let's take a look to some uh, numerical examples. And at first, as I said before, we have this predefined applications. Uh, and some couplings, but yeah, we are a relatively new package and we are looking forward uh, to implement more of this applications and couplings. And if you're interested, uh, just let me know. And okay, so we have some ODEs, some PDEs, and we have the coupling with Drake and Petsy for the heat equation and uh, with Getty P, which is a non heisen tool for the simulation of electrical machines. And the first thing is that we want to take a look at some results for the simulation of electrical machines. So we are using an existing model of a four pole uh, squirrel cage induction machine, which was presented in this paper. So this is really, uh, realistic um, set a realistic machine and we have a space time problem of 70k times 10k and backward Euler in time and the spatial solves are implemented in this external uh, tool Getty P and uh, yeah we use in this example we use spatial coarsening which means we have another uh, course model with only 4,000 degrees of freedom. And we use this on our coarser level and we use time parallelism here only. So we have no space uh, parallelism. So let's take a look at, the, at some results. So these are strong scaling results. And we see here the results for three, uh, three M-grid variants, so two level and two five level M-grids. And in comparison, we have the solution for time stepping. Again, this is, uh, we, we don't have spatial parallelism here. So these are the results for one processor. Um, further, we have here the dashed lines are the results for the M-grid variant with um, spatial coarsening and the solid lines without spatial coarsening. 
and we have results for a 256 processors and yet at all we see relatively nice scaling behavior especially for the variants with a spatial coarsening and we achieve a speed up uh, up to uh, 22 which is really nice so now let's take a look to another example this time uh, with space-time parallelism so for this we coupled our pi uh, package with uh, petsy for pi or with petsy using petsy for pi um, and we have python code only here which has access to all petsy data structures and um, solvers and so on we want to solve the heat equation um, with backward Euler and time finite uh, differences and we're using four cores in space so each um, each a space problem is uh, solved by using four processors in uh, space. And we have some MGrid variant, in this case a five level MGrid with some varying causing factor between the different levels. Uh, again, let's take a look to the results. So here we have the results again in black the time step uh, for the time stepping method, this time with spatial coarsening. So spatial coarsening is exhausted with about 32 processors here. And uh, the blue line, the result for space time parallelism with um, yeah, four processors in space, which means the eight processors here belongs to two processors in time and four processors in space. And yeah, one can see that we uh, already with 128 processors, we uh, achieve better results regarding the runtime here. And this isn't really the end of uh, what is possible. We could achieve more speed ups here, but our uh, cluster has only a limited number of processors. So let me summarize it. So PyMGrid is a Python implementation of the MGrid algorithm, which is really easy to install, to use, and yeah, which is very nice for prototyping. So you can just override single function to adapt the algorithm for your own needs. Uh, there are a variety of pre-implemented ODEs and PDEs, so you can play around with a package with the algorithm itself and get familiar with it. And yeah, we have time parallelism and it's really easy to couple it with other Python tools since we have the same language, but it's also not too hard to couple it with non-Python tools. But yeah, uh, this is a relatively new package and uh, there's a lot of work to do. So for example, uh, there are further extensions, adaptive time stepping, so varying relaxation uh, schemes per level and so on. Further, I haven't talked about memory management. Uh, Rob already mentioned that it's in great is possible to just store F points. At this point, uh, this is not possible for PyM grid, but yeah, that's a part of our future work. And we're looking forward to implement more uh, couplings and applications. Yeah, uh, let me thank you and here again as a GitHub link.